everyone. This is Jewish Talk coming to you live. Let me tell you, coming to you live as best as we can right here from NASA Community College on 90.3 WHBC, also streaming on the iHeart and the iTunes app. We can be seen in the studios on my Facebook Live page as soon as it gets in there, as well as the Facebook on WHBC. This program is later archived on Spreaker.com. So, hi there. My name is Rabbi Pearl. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And this, of course, all depends on when you are listening and when you are watching. So, how is everyone this morning? I must tell you, I woke up this morning, took a quick look at the front page of uh, Newsday, and all it was all about is called A New Approach to Mental Health. Talking about the Pilgrim, Pilgrimage State um, Psychiatric Center. And of course, our hearts go out as we read this week and read and learn all about Thomas Valva, who was a boy on a scooter zipping around his Valley Stream condo complex. He loved cars, especially matchboxes and hot wheels. And the surest way to make him smile was to read him a story. Well, that's how family and friends remember this eight year old boy whose death grabbed the attention of the people across the country, all over the world. People say, the police say that his father punished the boy, who had a moderate form of autism, by making him stay overnight on a concrete slab of sub-freezing garage without a blanket or pillow. I share this with you because our heart goes out to the family, to little boy, and it was very, very, very pertinent, as I will sh- uh, share with you, what happened in more than 500 communities this weekend. But first, let's say hello to all those listening. Hello, everybody. Hello, Michael. Thank you for listening and everybody else out there. Hello to Jonathan Wolf, Harvey Kepnes. Malka was with us last night. Don't get nervous. Gene, thank you so much, Gene. And, of course, to uh, everybody watching us and listening. Let me tell you what happened. Oh, Isa Klein just uh, jumped in here from uh, Williamsburg. Thank you so much. As the Shabbos queen, as Friday night usher was usher, we ushered in the great Shabbos, as, as it was ushered around the world, we joined more than 500 communities to open our doors as wide as possible. What am I talking about? You see, in conjunction with February's designation as the Jewish Disability Awareness and Inclusion Month, we participated in what was known as Shabbat Together. This is an annual weekend that's focused on champion and championing inclusion. And this year, the focus, we placed a tremendous focus on mental health and supporting and welcoming those who live with mental illness. We had an amazing program. It began on Friday night, the discussions on and learning on Shabbos morning. The sermon was dedicated to that, to this very important subject. And then last night at our shul, we had an amazing turnout of men, women, and young people to learn about mental illness, to be awareness, to be more caring, to be more inclusive. We were dressed by Dr. Stephen Shaw, who is a renowned um, expert in this field. He himself is a person of autism, travels the world literally to, um, to lecture on this subject, and he was fascinating, fascinating, really was uplifting. And we showed, we viewed a number of movies that emphasized how we must not treat a person by their by their uh, disability this is perhaps one small area of the person but they're capable they're active they can contribute to this world really you see mental illness is often invisible and sometimes undetected mental health challenges can be crushing but let me tell you something mental health is real and the challenges are growing every year the stigma surrounding mental health often prevents people from getting the help they need. Yet, help is available, and things can get better. Mental health professionals, we as a Chabad rabbi, myself, my wife, we have access 
to special counselors where all Chabad rabbis are able to turn to for uh, direction, for advice, and how we can help people who come our way. So mental health professionals, loving family, supportive community, and a resolute faith in God can help a person thrive despite the challenges. This entire weekend, which was focused on this subject, this countrywide, really, effort, draws its inspiration from the Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson of Righteous Memory, the Rebbe, the most influential rabbi in modern history, who taught that every individual who fulfills his or her obligations to extent of their God-given capacities shares in the totality of the effort and the accomplishment of all of us. <coughs> now, marking the 25th year since the passing of the Rebbe, a recent book has been published, really a breakthrough book. It's called Inclusion and the Power of the, in, of the Individual by Rabbi Ari Solish. It's published by Kahos Publishing Society, and was released earlier this year. It shares the Rebbe's pioneering teachings of the infinite potential of each person and how individuals have a role in the world that only they can fill. So in conjunction with a special weekend, I have five of these books to give away, but you have to email us at rabbipearl at chabadminiola.com Simply put your name and address, and we'll be happy to mail this free of charge, this special book of all the Rebbe's insights um, of inclusion and the power of individual. Again, my email is rabbipearl at chabadminiola.com. I want to share with you one particular letter that uh, dated back to 1979 to a person in Johannesburg, South Africa. It addresses the issue of how to feel secure. And the Rebbe writes, with regard to your writing about your feeling of depression, I trust it is surely unnecessary to explain to you at length that one of the basics of our Torah, Torah Chaim, the Torah of life, so-called because it provides us with the true guide in life, given by God, the creator and master of the world, is that God's benevolence and providence extends to each and every individually as it's frequently emphasized in the Psalms that God is your guardian, your keeper, is always at your right hand. So each one of us can feel quite secure in the constant presence and watchfulness of God. It's only necessary to keep the channels open to receive God's blessings. And how does a person keep those channels for blessings? They are, of course, that every day our life, our conduct, is in accordance with Torah and mitzvahs to the best of our ability. And since all of us have the ability to carry it out fully, because God provides us this ability, it is largely thereafter up to our own will and determination. And dear friends, many people turn to me about individuals, about persons, who are suffering from certain levels of depression. I'm not talking about advanced clinical depression, but simply feel insecure. And the best way to do that is to bring God into one's life. Just simply step out of one's environment. Go out, leave the house, get involved, speak to other people, listen to other people, learn from other people, contribute to other people. As they often we say, if we, everybody put their problems in, a, in, the, in the middle, everybody would go back with their own. So a little, here's a, an important question. Can you tell me why God gave me a mental illness? This is a question that comes our way many times. Why has he made me suffer? I'm not a bad person. Before I give you the answer, I want to say hello to um, Loretta Peskin. Good morning. To Patty Fuchs. To Tom Schwartz. To Harold Kornfeld. Oh, you can Florida's listening. Jay Mostel to Sean. Hello, Sean. Good morning, Sean. Fantastic. To Jay Mostel from Florida too. I guess we got more people listening in Florida. I guess it's it's uh, it's. I guess that's why they call this the warm up show. Oh, I guess for Long Island it's the warm up show. Down there it's hot. And good morning to Stephen White. Thank you to everybody. So our question is, can you tell me why God gave me a mental illness? 
Why has he made me suffer? I'm not a bad person. Let me give you some insight to this. And I'm not an expert from that. All I can tell you is from all that I've learned in preparing for this weekend, discussing mental health awareness and disability inclusion, I've become more respectful, more uh, understanding of the important role of the health professional. And, of course, to become more appreciative and respectful of those who do have a disability. And we said on Shabbos that a person with some disability doesn't have to earn his or her invitation to be included. That's a rotten way of thinking. Who are we to invite someone who has that include them? They're not on the outside at all. So they may have certain challenges, but that in no way lessens their important all the rights that we all enjoy. So let me answer this question about why this person asked us, why did God give me a mental illness? Every soul journeys down into this world with two suitcases. One is full of challenges, and the other, uh, I guess the, the challenges the soul has to face during lifetime, that's in one suitcase. And the other is full of talents and strengths necessary to withstand those challenges. The first suitcase is open for you. The second, you have to open yourself. Right? I guess, simple terms, when you walk into this world, you're carrying a suitcase. That's that's not not to do with you. It's full of those challenges. But there's also a second one filled with the abilities to withstand those challenges. Nobody can open up those suitcases except ourselves. Your soul's challenge, this person's challenge is mental illness. This person's mission is to use the talents to turn the pain and the frustration into a positive force. And all of us, every one of us, we're talking about you and me, we all have to help that person open up, open up their suitcase of amazing talents. At our conversation last night, it was really beautiful to see people asking insightful questions. Because of your openness and willingness to share your experiences, you can be an inspiration to others who have mental illnesses. You can bring hope and light to those who are not as strong as you by showing them how much they can achieve if they focus on their abilities. You can also bring understanding and insight to those who have not themselves experienced the pain of mental illness. I, for one, have learned an invaluable lesson from all the effort that is being made by Chabad leaders across the country at this time. I remember a conversation uh, when I was asked what was the hardest thing about having mental illness? And the person said it was the silence. When people discover that you suffer from mental illness, They don't know what to say. And the conversation comes to an abrupt and awkward end. So I ask you, what would you like them to say? And we actually watched a movie last night called Front of the Class. It was an amazing young boy, but a young boy, true story, who from his childhood actually had Tourette's syndrome, but nobody recognized it much older people made fun of him excluded him and when he was finally asked in school he was making noises in class and the principal called him out in front of the whole school during music time and he said you know do you realize that your noise the the noises that you make and the movements are disturbing he said yes he said well what would you Tell us about it. And he went on to explain what he had. He had Tourette's syndrome. He said, well, what would you like us to do? And his answer was, just treat me like everybody else. Everybody stood up, applauded him as he went back to his seat. It took him years to, over- to, um, to be accepted, but he eventually was, and he became an amazing teacher an amazing teacher, with all the noises and the movements, etc. I'm telling you, it was very, very moving. Everybody had tears in their eyes as they watched this 
and saw how he struggled. He had to even win over his father, who finally realized that he had a very special young man who wanted to be that teacher. With all of the Turet Sindham, you know, manifestations, he made an amazing, amazing teacher. He went on with life. He got married. He got his master's. And I think everybody out there, all of us hearing this and listening and watching, we too must make a difference and help people. And don't be silent when you find someone has a particular disability. And at our gathering last night, there was a man with a son. I would say he's an, a, really an adult son, but running around, making noises. I, I don't know what it's diagnosed to be called, but I want to tell you something. We all so, sat in awe and appreciation. Nobody made any comments. Nobody said, you're making too much noise. And I, the, my last line last night was, I said, I thank you, those who felt it important didn't find excuses with the weather and the other things, not to show up. But really, it takes someone with true sensitivity to want to spend a Saturday night, just a few hours, learning and appreciating what we have and the difference that we can make with so many. So you said, this person said, I wish they would ask me questions about my illness. I wish they would show an interest to understand what I'm going through. We all came away last night, my friends, with that. I wish they would give me a chance to share what I'm experiencing rather than let me suffer alone. And so in our shul, on the doors, on the tables, we put up a sign that says, Chabad, this Chabad is welcoming. It's a, an inclusive community. If we can be of help to you, please let us know. I'm not sure everyone is as willing to talk about this, but I suspect that many for many, the stigma of mental illness hurts more than anything else. So thank you for letting me see, see it from your perspective. And dear friends, I, or all of us, let's make a pledge to pass on this lesson. God has presented this person with a challenge, but has also given you a bright and warm personality, the strength of character that can stand up to the challenges that you face. This is the gift I hope you will share with the world. I want to say hello to uh, Rhonda Sutton. I want to say hello to uh, Dr. Kilshevsky, also known as Dr. Kildare. Thank you so much. Corey's back in town. Corey Arnold. Time for that bar mitzvah. Welcome to Karen Dumbeck. Good morning to you. And um, I want to thank you, uh, uh, Rhoda, for sharing your thoughts. And... Um, Yes, Dr. Kilshevsky is always on target. Today, our next topic is about trees. Because tonight, on the Jewish calendar, February 9th into the 10th, is February is called Tubishvat, Jewish New Year for Trees. So allow me to change gears and talk about the learning wisdom from the trees. Again, um the Jewish New Year always falls on the 50th day of the Jewish month of Shvat, which is tonight. That's why it's called Tu Bishvat. On the letters, Tesvav, we make two. Tesvav, 15. But beyond its agricultural significance, this day calls us to harness the power of a new start and take that first step to kickstart the spring in our lives. In a practical sense, tonight and tomorrow, we have the custom of eating fruits that Israel is blessed with, such as figs, pomegranates, dates, olives. Yet, in reality, look around. There are no fruits on the trees. <laughs> We're in the middle of the winter. Uh, isn't this celebration a kind of little premature? But, of course, the message of Tu Bishvat is that although the fruit has not yet grown, the process which creates them has begun. For people, for us, our fruits are our deeds and our achievements. And they, too, have their origin as well. They begin with an idea. See, a person is not only where he is physically, but where he's thinking about as well. You think about a vacation, you think about growing up, you think about what we do with, with more resources. Ideas come to our mind. And when that idea crystallizes in our minds, we are already halfway th towards achieving it. To be Jewish New Year for Trees 
the message is that all the great accomplishments begin is bringing out a compelling idea and a goal that's there. So one of the things that we should be thinking about, dream, dream big, think positive, and celebrate the power of our, our ideas. Let's take some time appreciating the awesomeness of, the, of nature. You know, grab an apple, marvel at the intricate detail and the unfathomable wisdom in the world that God has created. Look at the apple. It's so perfect, so sweet, so round. Nature is not only there to feed us, but also to inspire us. So on tonight and tomorrow, to Bishvat, we can look at trees and their fruit as our guides and our teachers. The date palm, which grows in salty conditions, yet brings forth honey, teaches us to extract the good from the bad. The olive tree, which produces oil, encourages us to bring more light into the world. And the grape, which is crushed before producing expensive wine, teaches us the value of humility. Last night, during our special gathering, Havdalah, we, we um, made a Havdalah, then everybody had a chance to braid, to actually make their own Havdalah candle. And we saw an important lesson of the Havdalah candle, of inclusiveness. On Friday nights, typically we light single candles. But on Saturday night, we make Havdalah, and we have a, a called the Havdalah candles, made up of many wicks. And we actually, together, braided them and made them into our own Havdalah candles. But interestingly, we took a color red, a color blue, a color white, and we braided them together. And each one became one and suddenly produced light. We too must appreciate that many people all create the image of God, all different colors. But if we bring them, if we see the unity, the image of God in all of us, we produce Havdalah candle. We produce something that produces light. Every single wick was burning equally. That's the important appreciation we must have of each other, especially of those who may have disabilities in some form. Another important aspect of Tu Bishvat, let me just say hello to everybody who is joining us on the radio. Thank you so much. It's amazing you took time out. Let's say hello to Mordecai ben Avram. Doug has joined us as well. And those who are listening, I tip my hat to you. Spring is on the way. We all have periods of winter in our lives, times of darkness, coldness, isolation. And sometimes it's hard to imagine ourselves back in a positive place. In Israel, after four long cold months, which is where the whole idea of Jewish New Year for trees began, at this, after four, all this, this particular time of the year, most trees have lost their leaves, battered by harsh winds and frost. Just when they look ready to be cut up and used for firewood, voila, new life appears again. The almond tree blossoms. These barren trees which have lay dormant for so long make their comeback. So today's Tu Bishvat lesson and message is not to let the difficult, non-productive times in our lives define us. And I will share with you something very close to me. As the resident rabbi of NYU Winthrop, I'm called often to rooms, not too often I should say, but to rooms where people are on the way out and the family is standing around the bed and we say to Hillen, we say psalms, and we sometimes sing, sing that person's favorite Jewish song. And one of the things I always say at those special, precious moments, that the purpose of coming together as a family and saying words of Tehillim, of Psalm, and, and talking about the person is to help us appreciate, never define the person by those machines throbbing in all different directions. The nurses coming in and out and testing and pulling and schlepping. And so, that's not the person. The person is a person who gave love, who produced a family, who supported a family, who contributed to society. So when we have holiness around the person and those final moments, it helps us define that person and ourselves, not by these external, you know, stuff, but by who we, what we are are all about. Like trees, we too live our lives in cycles, like the moon that waxes and wanes, shrinking and disappearing before growing and becoming full. Tu Bishvat 
always falls on a full moon. Take a look tonight. It's a full moon out there. Life is a cycle. Spring is just around the corner. As the Talmud says, better times can come in the blink of an eye. So as you witness the start of the transition from winter to spring, Tu Bishvat teaches us uh, and Bills tells us, Halsechayin, have patience and trust that good times are ahead. So Jewish wisdom is full of insightful comparisons between ourselves and trees and the fruits of Israel, urging us to learn character perfection from our deep-rooted forest friends. So now, with Tu Bishvat approaching this evening, it's time for us to spring, put some spring into your step. I know, no pun intended. Branch out and take a leaf out of nature's book with some green gems. Let me just share with you as much as time. I'll share with just one or two. Be diligent like an almond. The almond tree is a symbol of Tubishvat, the first tree to blossom, always right on time. It's essential. It's, an, it's essential quality is actually in the Hebrew name for a Ahmed is shaked, shkedim, coming from the verb lishkod, which means to be diligent. In Hebrew, a shakdan is someone who is always reliable, punctual, and diligent. That's an important lesson that we can learn. Another of course, important one is, find the sweetness of life, even in bitter times. If you've ever visited Israel, you'll notice that the date palms are one of the few trees that can flourish anywhere, even on salty marshland of the Dead Sea, where nothing else grows. In fact, Israel produces a third of its date harvest from the shores of the Dead Sea. And what do these dates produce? Honey, the sweetest thing of all. My friends, let's appreciate that, the honey and the sweetness of people around us. Here we have a birthday in the middle of the winter. As I said, new life is just around the corner. Just like trees, we all go through personal winters where productivity feels on the wane. How do we bring ourselves back to life? Well, trees may look bare and dead, but don't be deceived. The sap is already rising in the tree. Trunks and the first signs of life are about to appear. We may not see the fruit yet, but the inspiration is there. As long as we stay connected, still thirsty for inspiration, even through the winter, guess what? Tu Bishvat teaches us that new hope and new life is never far away. This is your host, Rabbi Pearl, wishing you a fantastic... Stay tuned to this great station. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Shalom.